Hi, I'm Andy Glass with Glass Impressions. Today I'm going to bring you along as I build two cabinets for a client's built-in fireplace in their basement. I went to the client's home to inspect the openings and took my measurements. I went back to the shop and began building the carcass out of 3 quarter inch oak plywood. I cut the plywood to width at the table saw using a multi-purpose blade as these cuts are with the grain and the possibility of tear out is minimal. I use a riving knife and board buddies on my fence to help prevent kickback. With the long sections of plywood ready to be cross cut, I rough them out with my jigsaw. I check the factory corners and they are 90 degrees. I will use a factory edge at my table saw to cut them to length. With the workpiece longer than it is wide, it is very important to be aware of kickback. Only apply pressure to the section in between the blade and the fence and keep it nice and tight against the fence. If you do not feel comfortable making this cut, there are many other ways to make this cut. With the carcass parts cut out, I can now drill the holes for the adjustable shelves. I clamp a jig to the panel and use a drill bit with a collar and built-in stop to get the depth and spacing perfect. When you reach the end of the jig, simply remove the clamps and slide the jig down and place a 1 quarter inch dowel to index the jig from the previous holes. Clamp it down again and drill the remaining holes. Now it is time to assemble the carcass. I apply yellow wood glue and use a corner clamping jig to hold the sides at a perfect 90 degrees to the bottom. I then slide the work forward so I can get access to the underside. I use a few 18 gauge brad nails to temporarily hold the pieces together until I can pre-drill and drive 2.5 inch screws to give the joint some extra strength. With the carcass assembled and drawing, we can focus on the face frame. I mill oak hardwood at the planer to a thickness of 3 quarters of an inch. With the hardboard milled to thickness, we need to prepare for ripping. I install a dedicated 24 tooth ripping blade into the table saw. With the face frame stock ripped to width, we can now set up our stop block at the miter saw and prepare to cut all our parts to length. I should note I am making two cabinets of the same exact dimensions. I remove the snipe we received at the planer and rotate the material to put the square cut against the stop block. With all the face frame parts cut to length, we can now drill pocket holes at the bench top pocket hole machine. Once completed, we can head back to the bench and assemble the face frame with yellow wood glue and four pocket screws. One screw per joint. I hook my dust collection up to my sander to sand the face frame nice and smooth and even out the joints. To attach the face frame to the carcass, I apply yellow wood glue and apply even clamping pressure with the help of four calls and a bunch of parallel clamps. Next at the table saw, I cut half inch edge banding for the adjustable shelves. I set up four panel clamps to glue the edge banding to the shelf. To apply even clamping pressure across the entire length of the board, I use a thick clamping call. I then sand the shelf to prepare for finish and even out the plywood and edge banding joint. I use a hand saw to rough cut the edge banding to the panel. I will then head over to the edge sander to get a perfectly smooth and flush joint. I apply the desired stain the client requested with an applicator pad, making sure to finish the bottom first, then flip and finish the top. This allows the stained top to dry without touching the bench cookies. I then apply stain to the carcass. No need to finish the exterior past the face frame, as it will be pushed into the built-in. We can now work on the doors and they couldn't be any easier. 
A simple frame with a rabbit as the clients will purchase a smoked glass upon delivery. I mill up the door parts similar to the face frame material with the exception of the dimensions and joinery. I elected to use loose tenon joinery as it is extremely fast and accurate. Alternative joinery methods can be used. Simple butt joints, traditional mortise and tenon, or dowels would work great too. Now we can glue up the door. I apply glue to the mortise and loose tenons. I then place the door in two panel clamps with the clamping force applied to the joints. With the door now dry, I head to the router table with a rabbiting bit to make the rabbit for the glass. I took a few passes to safely get to the target depth. I changed the cut depth by changing the bearing on the router bit. Now to sit back and enjoy a little chisel work to square up the rabbit left by the router bit. I clamp a jig to the door to assist in drilling the cups for the hinges. This jig is meant to be used with a hand drill but I find it even easier to use in the drill press. I remove the drilling jig and place the hinges in the cups. I use a long straight piece of scrap wood to assist in keeping the hinges nice and parallel to the edge of the door. This will ensure it will hang correctly. I pre-drill with a self-centering drill bit and drive the included hinge screws. With the hinges attached, I can mount it to the cabinet using a spacer to get the proper height of the door. Now it's time to install the cabinets. I shimmy the cabinet into the built-in, making sure it is nice and level. I then can secure it with four screws. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please smash the like button, share, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. If you are new to my channel, I encourage you to check out my past videos as there is surely something you will enjoy. If you'd like to stay up to date with glass impressions, I encourage you to like me on Facebook and follow me on Instagram for mid-project pictures.